Hello everyone, this is Recon Stewart, and today I am starting a couple different series. Uh, one will be Maple Flag Missions, uh, the Advanced Flight Training Qualification Courses, and the other is <clears throat> I've been honored to join uh, and be accepted into the 476th Virtual Fighter Group, and I am one of their trainees in the 74th Virtual uh, Training Squadron, the Flying Tigers. And so they'll be putting me through a number of uh, initial qualification trainings as well as uh, mission qualification trainings to get me combat mission ready. So I thought that uh, I would film some of our trainings and put that out there for everyone on YouTube. Uh, one of the things I wanted to do was to stop uh, filming my startup procedure and uh, just film one startup procedure. Uh, that everybody can watch and then I can just skip it uh, as we go forward making my videos a little shorter So without further ado, uh, this is the 476th uh, Virtual fighter group startup procedure uh, that I've adapted my own and I use their checklist Which they came out with and is free to the public uh, If you'd like it you can go to the website that's uh, posted down below or uh, you can go to uh, send me an email and I will send you uh, the three checklists that I use uh, for DCS Warthog. All right, let's get started. First things, I'm going to close my canopy as uh, it's going to get noisy and I get quite annoyed when uh, I'm trying to listen to YouTube videos and I cannot hear what's going on because of the uh, APU. So first things first is we have the left console, the instrument console, and the right console. and in the real plane the real pilots need to go through this every time they get in and make sure all the switches are set where they need to be before adding power to the aircraft so that's what we're going to do right now starting with the left console so first things first I need to make sure that my uh, ground safety is on for all my weapons my Iggy HQ TOT TOD is disabled my IFF antenna upper is set to both And then, let me zoom back out here. The next step is the KY58 needs to be set to off. Now this is the uh, system that encrypts radio broadcasts and makes it uh, a little bit harder for the enemy to pick up what we're saying. However, it is not modeled in DCS World, so you can skip this step if you want to, but I throw it in there just for people that like to be as close to uh, the real checklist and the real pilots as possible. Next, uh, we're going to set our VHF uh, frequencies for Sukumi, which is 129. And then we're going to check our emergency flight controls. So, flap. Emergency retract is set to aft. Flight conditions normal. Excuse me, flight controls normal. Uh, if in the event that you would lose hydraulic pressure, you might switch to manual reversion, so that you can fly by wire and get the aircraft back on the ground. But for now, we're going to leave flight controls norm. Aileron and elevator emergency disengage. We're going to have that set to the middle position on both. And speed brake emergency retract. We're going to have that set to aft and then pitch roll trim we're gonna have set to norm uh, next we're gonna have our HARS SAS set to norm we're gonna have our refuel status and indexer lights uh, set to however you like them I leave them on bright and then your invis lights are set to off now invis lights are lights when you're flying formation using night vision goggles that make it a little easier on your wingmen However, again, this system is not modeled in DCS, so I'll have it set to off. And then weapon status lights, uh, I'm going to set that to about half. All right, uh, let's see here. If you move the throttle, you can see on the left throttle you have the pinky switch, which is uh, lights override. You need to set that to aft position. Make sure your throttles are back up off the detent, 
and then we're going to make sure that our flaps are set to up and make sure that our speed brake is centered APU is off engine operation ignition switches in the normal position and engine fuel flow left and right both normal we're going to go ahead and set our boost pumps for main left and right on and for wing left and right on and we'll make sure that our emergency brake handle is pushed in now if we were going to do a right engine start first instead of left you would want to pull that emergency brake out but since we're going to be doing a normal left engine start we can leave it pushed in all right on to the instrument panel uh, we're going to make sure landing gear handle is down we're going to make sure that our landing taxi light is off make sure that master arm is safe gun pack safe laser safe TGP is off our alt uh, altimeter setting is barometric our HUD mode is day and norm uh, kick you is off JTARS is off if sick is off left MFCD is off right MFCD is off standby attitude indicator is caged and we'll come up here we're going to reset our accelerometer we're going to make sure we can pull out and push back in each of our fire handles for the left right and APU and then make sure the fire extinguishing discharge switch is centered and we come down here make sure that our auxiliary uh, landing gear handle works and make sure that all of our breakers are pushed in and everything is good and it looks like they are okay that's it for the instrument console we're going to come over here to the right console and if it were nighttime uh, you might uh, turn on your emergency flood and get a little bit of light in the cockpit uh, so that you can see a little easier but since we don't need that I'm just gonna switch up our AC gen power left and right on and then we're gonna make sure our countermeasure system is off we're gonna come down here to our uh, CDU off off page knob set to other and steer point knob steer point knob set to mission then we'll check on our oxygen setting is off uh, and our environmental settings we need our bleed air set to on and our main air supply set to on which they are and then we're going to set our TACAN and ILS and Sakumi doesn't have TACAN or ILS so we'll leave both those systems off for now and then I'm going to go ahead and set my lighting system if I can Calm down track. Oh, there we go. So position light set to flash. If it was nighttime, I might set formation lights, but I'm not going to now. Engine lights set to about 25%. Auxiliary instruments set to uh, 25%. Flight instruments set to 25%. Turn on the light from my accelerometer and my compass. And then I'd like my console lights about 60% and my floodlights about 30 percent this is all personal preference so however you like to do it alright and that concludes setting up the left console the right console and the instrument panel making sure all the switches are where they need to be before we add power to the aircraft so now what we want to do is flip on our battery switch or excuse me battery power to on and we're going to come over here and turn on our UHF radio or our uniform radio or our mid radio all three synonymous uh, this is our front mid aft radio or VHF AM UHF VHF FM or uh, Victor radio uniform radio and Fox Mike radio all interchangeable I set up the uniform so that I can communicate with the, the tower and members of the uh, 476th prior to getting an engine start if need be. Once that's done, I'm going to come over here and turn on uh, an in inverter to standby. And that's going to crank up. I'm going to next do a uh, instrument check. Make sure that my instrument panel looks okay, and it does. 
I'm going to come over here and I'm going to do a fire detect bleed air test. You're going to see uh, a caution panel light up here. And my fire handles light up and my master caution goes off. Everything looks good. I'm going to check my gear lights. Looks like right, nose, and left all green and good. I'm next going to do a signal lights temp. Make sure my caution panel all lights up. Make sure all the lights around the cockpit are functioning properly. All the caution panels, everything in the emergency panel, uh, canopy, marker beacon, steering wheel engaged, everything looks good. Alright. Let's do our fuel quantity check. Uh, looks like I have a little over 11,000 pounds. When you do this test indicator, it should come to uh, 200 or so within 6,000 pounds, which it does. Go ahead and turn on my oxygen and do an oxygen indicator check. Make sure that it'll alert me when oxygen gets low. It does. Alright, we're all set. Now it's time to flip on our APU switch. And while that spins up, We'll watch the APU here in the uh, RPMs, and I believe this is the temperature gauge. We're going to wait for this to spin up to 100% RPM. And there we are. And once that happens, we're going to turn on APU generator power. And then we're going to immediately turn on CDU and Iggy and get our uh, navigation alignment started. Once that's done, we're going to come over here and turn on our forward radio and our aft radio. And uh, set those frequencies up if we haven't already, but we did. Alright, we are ready to start our engines. I'm going to contact ATC and request an engine startup. Tower. Request startup. Takumi. Hog. 1-1. One, one. Request startup. Hog. 1-1. Takumi. Clear for startup. Wind 151 at 8 meters per second. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and move the left throttle off the detent. And we're going to see... Uh, engine start cycle light come on and we're gonna watch our gauges we have our left engine gauges here we have temperature we have percent RPM and we have oil pressure and when all is said and done we should be just above 550 ITT or 550 cel degrees Celsius on our temperature we should be about 60 percent RPM and we should be about 60 percent oil pressure when this engine is done um, starting up. Now this engine start cycle light will kick off when it's finished and the APU gen warning light is going to come on. We'll go ahead and silence that. What that is is saying that now that the engines are running we have electrical power we can turn the APU generator off. However I like to wait until all of my electronic systems are up and running before doing that. So we see our engine light start cycle has gone away and we see our engine is at about 550 ITT, about 60% RPM, and just under 60 uh, PSI. So that's good. We're going to go ahead and lift the right throttle off the detent. And we'll do the same thing with the right engine. As you can see, the engine start cycle is going. And uh, our engines are spooling up. These are the right engine gauges here. This is the left fan speed, the right fan speed, the left fuel flow, and the right fuel flow, and then the two APU gauges. Over here you have your right, or excuse me, your left hydraulic system and your right hydraulic system, and of course your fuel gauge. Uh, the fuel display selector, you have internal, main, wing, and then if you have any external tanks on here. But if you leave it at internal, it will just count all of the um, fuel that you have. It should deplete uh, external first, 
and then wing, and then main, and then inter uh, well, internals everything. But if you do have an external tank, you need to make sure that you flip them on here, or else it won't start using the fuel inside them. And you definitely want to use the external tanks first. Okay. Anyway, sidetrack there. Looks like our engines are spooled up. We are good to go. Uh, if we had uh, done a right engine start first, then we would go ahead and push the emergency brake in and also turn cross feed off, which we would have needed to get the fuel over to the right engine. And then when that's done, we're going to go ahead and set up our countermeasure system into standby. And we're going to come down here to this system here, which is called the Tizzle. This is used to navigate to any laser sources. So, for instance, if a JTAC has got a target laser for us, uh, we would have to cage this system so that it's not overriding our Iggy. However, as in other things, the Tizzle's not modeled. But as you can see, I like to, to uh, just do my startup as if everything is uh, as the real plane. Okay, we're going to come down here. We're going to turn on our windshield, defog the ice. And then we're going to check our signal lights again. Everything looks good. We're going to cycle our flaps. 7 degrees, 20 degrees. Flaps full up. We'll cycle our speed brakes. Looks good. I do a flight controls check for ailerons, elevators, and rudders. Now I cannot see the elevators on the tail, so you'd have to have your wingman check those for you. Alright, that's set up. Let's turn on our uh, SAS system. We'll check it to the left and to the right and turn on takeoff trim. We'll then make sure our anti-skid is coming uh, working. You can see the light over here. It's on and back off. Check how our alignment's doing. You can see that T equals 4.0.0.8, which lets us know that alignment is completed. So I'm going to hit the nav button here, LSK right 3. And then I'm going to turn Iggy on here in the navigation panel. Next, I'm going to turn on uh, Kick U, JTARS, and IFSIC. I'm going to uncage the standby attitude indicator. I'm going to turn on my right and left MFCD and while those are spooling up I'm going to engage my pre-flight bit test uh, for the IFSIC Okay, so I'm going to come over here and acknowledge this uh, Dismiss inventory message. Then I want to do a DTS upload. Pull up! Pull up! I have to load the TAD, altitude, the Dismiss, altitude. the TGP, and any page items. I could do those individually, or I can just hit load all. When I hit load all, you'll see these asterisks all disappear, and when they return, that means we had a successful DTS upload. So we'll get that started now. Looks like our bit test is finished. We'll hit enter and go to exit and then come back down here and turn IFSIC on. And then I'm going to use my master mode button on my flight uh, stick to change to the navigation system. There we go. And it looks like we've got all of our 
asterisk back, so I'm going to change my right MFCD to CDU. And I'm going to change my check my Dismas page. Looks like we've got some BDU 33 training bombs, some BDU 50 training bombs, and two training Mavericks, and 1150 combat mix in the gun. That all looks good. I'm going to come over here and set my TAD up. And if I was in a flight group, I might have to change like my own uh, group ID. We'll call it 74. And maybe my owner ID is 12. And that way I can see my flight group uh, on, the, on the TAD system here. Alright. With that done, we're going to turn off the APU generator. Now that all my electronics and avionics are up, we're also going to turn off the APU. I'm going to come down here and turn my page knob to position and hit LSK, the right LSK1 twice to get to ground speed so that I can see what my ground speed is while taxiing. Next thing I'm going to do is hit the EAC switch which is under throttle here. Turn that on and I'm going to turn radar altimeter to norm. And both those lights are off. I'm going to go ahead and turn on anti-skid. Turn my uh, taxi light on. And go ahead and turn on nose wheel steering with the pinky button. And you can see that it's engaged. Okay. Tower. Disregard. Tower. Request taxi. Taxi to runway. Hold one one. Sakumi, clear to taxi to runway one two. All right. So I'm going to give it a little bit of throttle, and we're going to taxi to our right here. While taxiing, you don't want to go over a ground speed of 20 knots. It's just dangerous and uh, you're not uh, in control very well. You can see these dotted hash marks. These are the taxi lines here for Sakumi. You can see I'm about 19, 20 knots ground speed, so I'll leave the throttle off for a bit and coast here down the taxiway. Like our taxi is right over, or our, excuse me, our runway is right over there.
Sukumi Hog 1 1, holding short runway 1 2 at Alpha. Alright, brakes are set. Let's get our takeoff checklist done. Double check our engine instruments, make sure they're still in the green. They look good. Set flaps to 7 degrees. Speed brakes are closed. Make sure countermeasure system is on standby. Make sure that Iggy is set in our navigation system. Make sure our oxygen is on. Defog, de-ice is on. Pedo heat is on. Ejection seat is armed. We'll go ahead and change our lighting from position flash to position steady and turn on our anti-collision lights. And then we'll check and make sure our altimeter is set. This is set to standard sea level. Uh, we need to set it for uh, the altitude of the runway. So I know that um, we are closer to about 100 here. So set that. And with that, we are going to request takeoff. Tower. Tower. Guess they can't hear us today. up on the center line make sure anti-skid is on make sure pedo heat is on make sure APU gen and APU are off brakes are set I'm gonna run the throttles up to 90% RPM make sure that our engines are still maintaining the green they look good Brakes, brakes, brakes. Full throttle. And nose wheel steering off. Got a little bit of a wind there. Our rotation speed with this loadout is probably about 120, uh, 127. So rotating now. Up, gear up. Quite a crosswind here. Flaps up. Engines are still in the green. Trimming out the aircraft as necessary. This crosswind. Sakumi, Hog 1 1. Airborne is fragged. All right, and we are airborne. That is the 476th startup procedure. Uh, of course, you can do it a little bit faster than I did if you want to cut out some of the uh, non uh, mod modded. Uh, excuse me. You want to cut out the non-functioning uh, instruments here in DCS, but um, I like to do it like the real pilots would. But that's how we get airborne, and uh, we just get ourselves into formation now and head towards the target or the training grounds. Thanks for watching. This is Recon Stewart, and we will see you next time. Take care.